Now let us proceed with the common punctuation problem. This include the commas, the semicolons, column, and apostrophe. Let us first look into the commas. In the typical sentence, commas are used to indicate a pause. We use comma quite often. We learn how to construct comma in our learning process of the English in our primary and secondary schools. But we have not systematically go through the usage of the comma. Let us look at this table for us to get a better idea how the commas are used. First, you use comma after each item in the series. You are talking about there will be a series of something and when you have several items at the end of each item there will be a comma indicating there is a series the example sentence is this the experiments were carried out in a tank 1.8 meter wide 4 meter long and 1 meter deep you see that there is a series of dimensions for the tank here which is 1.8 meter wide 4 meter long and 1 meter deep therefore you will need a comma here to separate the items within the series in fact there are two ways that you can do it let's say now you have item A, B and C in the series if you follow the UK English, there won't be any comma before the end. However, if you are using the US English, there will be a comma before the end. Whichever you choose, you need to be consistent throughout. The meaning of consistent throughout is not just the applications of commas, it also expand to all other writing patterns as standardized by the UK or US this including different spellings and different usage of the terminologies normally for commonwealth countries UK English will be used next you also use the comma to separate a dependent clause from the main clause in the sentence for example, this sentence The evolutions of a typical soaring profile along the longitudinal directions, comma, which is illustrated in figure 2, comma, may be divided into four stages. The sentence within the two comma here is a dependent clause, which itself doesn't stand alone. It doesn't make sense as a complete sentence while the rest are the main sentences imagine if you remove this which leads to the the revolutions of typical soaring profile along the longitudinal directions may be divided into four stages if you remove this the sentence is still stand alone it is still a complete sentence that means the sentence within the two comma here adds as additional information to the main sentence and this additional information is referring to the evolutions of the typical soaring profile if you observe the structures it seems like there is an additional structures within an existing main sentence Next, you use comma after an introductory phase or dependence clause. Taking this as an example, although the Kyoto Protocol was signed in 2007, comma, it has had limited impact on reducing global warming. The it here is referring to the Kyoto Protocol. The first half of the sentence is the introductory phrase and then the second half of the sentence is giving you the main information. 
The message here is the Kyoto Protocol has limited impact on reducing the global warming. The additional information is it has already been signed in 2007. Next, you use comma to separate the information that is not essential to the meaning of the sentence. Taking this as an example, the rapid growth in human populations, comma, with the accompanying urban migrations and industrializations, comma, has impacted water ecosystem around the world. The sentence within the comma here is an additional information to the main sentence, which in fact, if you remove this sentence, it will sound like the rapid growth in human populations has impacted water ecosystem around the world. Now, when you remove these additional information, the sentence here is still standalone and the thought is still complete. It will be as if in this one as an information adding to the main information, which can be there and can be not there without actually affecting the correctness of the sentence. Only that with additional information provided, the things become clearer, the readers gain better understanding, and this will help to strengthen your message. Please bear in mind that normally we will prefer simple sentences with simple structure. Unless it is necessary, long sentences with complex structures will have to be used. The purpose of sharing this slide is not actually encouraging you to construct complex sentences, having many additional information embedded in a main sentence. You know that the longer the sentence, the more complex the structure, the reader will need to consume more time in first identifying the structure, knowing the additional information what it is referring to and then comprehending the sentence. There are situations where you need to construct the sentence like this. You know that technical writing are normally constructed in paragraph, sentence by sentence. Each paragraph provides a message, follow a linear reading line, and which you feel certain additional information is really necessary Sometimes you want to narrow down the scopes. Sometimes you want to prevent the reader to guess anything beyond what you are intended to. Then there will be additional information incorporated within the writing. Now the problem is how you going to put into the additional information. If you want to construct it in the new sentence, this will affect the smoothness and consistency in terms of the focus of the topic that you are discussing. When you are introducing A, which you feel B is also necessary, if you create another sentence dedicated for the B, and then after you have done the additional information, which is B, you will need to proceed back from the line of A. That means there will be an unsmooth transition between your sentence B going back to the topic A. Under such circumstances, sometimes the writers may choose to use this kind of sentence. With that said, if you want to incorporate additional information, you must first evaluate whether this additional information is really significant, or is it just for the sake that demonstrate to the reader that how knowledgeable you are. Therefore, you must first consider the necessity of having those additional information and then you will have to evaluate whether having this additional information disclosed will it affect or interrupt the flow of the message being delivered. Then you will decide whether you need sentences in this format. Next, you also use the comma to differentiate the compound phrases. Taking this as an example, 
most large technology companies have different departments such as human resources, finance, and research and development working together to achieve the company goals. What you see here, there are two N here. And you see there is a series of items here, which include first, human resources, second, finance, third, research and development. The N here is a compound N. This research and development is a department. And you need an N for the last item within the series. Therefore, in this case, you're going to put a comma here to indicate this is the last of the series in order to differentiate that this is a compound item. Next, we will proceed with semicolons. It is basically used to connect the independent sentences to show a close relationship between these sentences. These are two conditions where you can use semicolons, which is between two closely related sentences. For example, the arrow C, once the fourth largest lake in the world, has been evaporating and shrinking since the 1960s. The lake's area is now 25% of its original size and holds just 10% of its original volume of water. What you see here, this entire statement here consists of two separate sentences. These sentences are combined into one indicating those are closely related to each other. It is about the aerial sea, which has been evaporating and shrinking since 1960s. And then the next sentence here, further elaborate this aerial sea. The lake here is referring to the aerial sea. Next, you can also use semicolons to separate list of item in the list when the item in the list are separated by commas. What does it mean by this? Let us look at the example here. The committee will be checked by Rong Stone, who will lead the budget panel, semicolon. Inda Weston, our keynote speaker, and aid to the presidents semicolons and Gail Fis, our VP of Finance. You see now theoretically you should have everything here in commas. But now what you see the sentence here, there is structures within structures. This will be the additional information to Linda Weston. And this will be the additional information for Ron Strong. And this will be the additional information for Gail Fitz. Now, if you have everything in comma, you find difficulty to demonstrate to the reader which is the item within the series and which is the additional information to the item in the series. In this case, this will lead to the confusions of the reader. So what you can do here, you use semicolons to differentiate the items in the series. You will see a structure something like this. You know that the committee here is actually the formations of this wrong stone, Linda Weston and Gail Fitz. And who are those people? Rongstong is the person to lead the budget panel. Linda Weston is the keynote speaker and aide to the president. And Gail Fish is the BP of the finance. With the help of the semicolons, now the items in the series are clear.
it differentiates the series with the additional information to the series. Next, we will proceed with the column. It is used to indicate something that will follow, such as a list, a series, or an elaboration. These are the conditions where columns will be used, which is before a numbered or bullet list. For an example, the process has been divided into four stages. One, initial stage. Two, developing stage. Three, stabilizing stage. And four, asymptotic stage. What you see here, there will be a list of bullets after this sentence here, the columns will be used to indicate the starting of the list. I believe most of us have no problem with the usage of the column. You may also use it before a series. For an example, in physics, matter exists in four states, columns, solid, liquid, gas or plasma. The column here indicate that the series is about to start. Next it will be the apostrophe. It is used to indicate the processive form of nouns. These are the usage of the apostrophe. Using the apostrophe as with singular noun, such as the camera's features that means you are talking about the features of one camera. Using the S apostrophe with the plural nouns, for example, the camera's features. Now you are talking about the features of several cameras. Or you may use apostrophe in contractions. It is when two words are merged together, such as can't, hasn't, isn't. However, you know that this kind of words is informal writing, which shouldn't be there for a technical writing. Therefore, by all means, try to use these contractions with the apostrophe.